Last time we talked about the first five generations of legendary Pokemon and how they would fight against each other. Here's an overview of our winners so far. If any of these seem weird to you, take a look at the previous video. Just to recap, I'll focus on abilities and powers as to describe the in-game lore in Pokedex entries, not game data like stats. Much like the games themselves, this is going to be somewhat underwhelming. I actually kind of like Gen 6, but there really isn't much to say here. Xerneas has the power to share eternal life, and when hurt, turns into a tree to sleep and recover. Yveltal absorbs life energy from others, and when hurt, turns into a cocoon to sleep and recover. Zygarde is the protector of the ecosystem. It can split itself into tiny cells and spread them out all over the place as scouts, merging them back together to gain power when necessary. So basically what you're telling me is that there's a blue monster and a red monster, and they form a very delicate balance that influences the entire world, and they absolutely hate each other. And whenever they fight, the very balance of the world is in disarray, and then a green snake comes by to beat them up and calm them back down. Anyway, Zygarde's Pokedex entry clearly states that at 100% it is stronger than the two and it essentially fills the same role as Rayquaza, so that's definitely a win. As for Xerneas and Yveltal, one kills and one heals. And I assume at the same rate. So them fighting would be like watching a JoJo's fight as a non-stand user. They just kinda stand there. If you have to have a winner here, Fairy-type beats Dark-type any day. It's still second place though. Gen 7, specifically the second half, has some wild lore. Essentially, throughout the games you meet Pokémon from different dimensions, so-called Ultra Beasts. And there are three Pokémon connected to these Ultra Beasts. Solgaleo is a giant space lion that radiates sunlight energy and can light up even the darkest night. Lunala devours light energy, causing darkness even in the middle of day. It then in turn gives off moonlight, which is different from sunlight and I'm not so sure about this scientifically, but there you go. Both of these Pokémon can also travel through ultra space to different dimensions. And then there's Necrozma. Apparently it was originally a sort of light deity, giving light to all kinds of different dimensions, but was then imprisoned and exploited for its energy, reducing it to a weakened state. It escaped and tried to steal some of the light that originally belonged to it back, but of course the guardians of Alola didn't like that. Hashtag Necrozma did nothing wrong. Necrozma draws energy from light in every shape. It can also absorb Solgaleo or Lunala and then feast on the light energy that they radiate. Or, as the Pokedex calls it, it can dominate and subjugate the two. If it absorbs enough light, it can eventually go Super Saiyan. Fun fact, Solgaleo is considered a male evolution of Cosmog, while Lunala is considered the female version. Ah yes, the three genders. Sun Lion, Moon Bad, and the third. God of Light. Well, it's a win for the non-binary folks at home, as everyone's favorite genderqueer icon completely annihilates the competition. Not only is it the same as with Curum, given its ability to slurp up one of the legendary Pokémon, but its ultra form is leagues above anything else. In this form, it literally gave light to the different dimensions, including the main dimension of Pokémon. It can fire laser beams and emit light that affects other beings in various ways. I could do a whole video talking about what kind of powers Ultra Necrozma could have, and if it might even be on a level comparable to the literal gods of the Pokemon universe, but for now let's just say, is a lot. Is a lot, and definitely enough to beat the other two. As for Solgaleo vs Lunala, both of their abilities seem to be super strong against one another. Basically they're a light switch, with Solgaleo being the on option and Lunala being the off option turning their fight into the world's most annoying 10th birthday party. I'm grasping at straws here, but Lunala's Pokedex entry implies that it somehow converts absorbed light into energy, meaning that Solgaleo would essentially be feeding at power throughout their battle. So I'm gonna put Lunala in a shaky second place. Gen 
3,000 years ago, Eternatus arrived in Gala on a meteorite and then attempted to absorb all energy within the region, almost destroying it in the process. This is referred to as the Darkest Day. It was eventually stopped by Zacian, Zamazenta and two human kings? Maybe? There's some, there's some fear? Anyway, it left behind the phenomenon of Dynamaxing which allows Pokemon to absorb energy from their surroundings to rapidly grow in size and power for a short period of time. Zacian is also referred to as the Fairy King's Sword and is able to cut down anything, including Dynamax Pokemon. Zamazenta is referred to as the Fighting Master's Shield and is able to block any attack, once again including from Dynamax Pokemon. Local Space Serpent Eternatus has the power of absorbing energy and achieving the ultimate Dynamax form, Eternamax, which is so powerful that it warps space-time around it. In the games, these Pokémon are incredibly powerful, with Eternamax Eternatus literally being the strongest Pokémon, full stop. But if you look at their powers lore-wise, they're honestly not that impressive. I feel like, to a Pokémon, whose very existence causes space to exist. Making Pokemon a little big seems like a pocket trick. Since the free Pokemon are heavily inspired by British mythology, maybe that's just what they are. Two knights fighting a dragon. Of course, all the energy from an entire region is quite a good amount, and we know that neither Zacian nor Zamazenta can win without the other, so Eternatus definitely takes first place. Between the two dogs, it's surprisingly easy. While both are great at doing their own things, Zacian is simply in a better position. At the start of the battle, Zacian increases its attack, while Zamazenta increases its defense. But Zacian's Sacred Sword not only hits super effectively, it also ignores the defense boost, and Zamazenta just simply has no good options to fight back. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet deal with, spoiler alert, I guess, time travel. Namely, getting Pokemon from the past or future and putting them into present time. And while the concept is really cool, Koridon and Miraidon really are just guys. Just a bunch of lads who enjoy a good sandwich. We don't really know much about them except that they are considered powerful and one of each species has committed murder. I'm also fairly certain Miraidon has committed tax fraud, but I can't prove that. Yet. It's also important to note that those two are not unique. There are multiple of these Pokémon in the games, which is not the case for any of the other legendaries. Koridon's Pokédex entry mentions it can split the lands with its bare fists, and Miraidon turned the land to ash with its lightning, which sounds really impressive. Until you realize that Tyranitar's dex entry reads, If it rampages, it knocks down mountains and buries rivers. Maps must be redrawn afterwards. And you just realize that Pokemon are just simply terrifying little freaks. I personally think that those two are essentially the pseudo-legendaries of their respective times. But who wins? They can basically knock each other out in one super effective Dragon-type move and they're equally fast. So let's make this more complicated. Let's let them both terrestrialize. In case you're not fully familiar, here's what that means. Koridon is a dragon and fighting type. If it terrestrializes into fighting type, incoming attacks treat it as if it were only fighting type. In addition, its own fighting type moves now do double damage. If we also assume that Miraidon terrestrializes into an electric type, here's the situation. 1. Dragon type moves no longer do super effective damage against anyone. 2. They both have abilities that affect the battlefield. Koridon causes harsh sunlight and gains attack, while Miraidon causes electric terrain and gains special attack. 3. Sunlight increases the power of fire-type moves. Electric terrain increases the power of electric-type moves. And 4. Koridon's signature move is fighting, not fire. Miraidon's signature move is electric. Do you see where I'm going with this? Miraidon gets a boost to its signature move from its ability, Koridon does not. That means Miraidon can hit just barely harder and win the fight. With all of these complete now, here is an overview of all of our winners from this time. And that means throughout all nine generations, this is our winning team. 
But there are still so many Pokemon left out there. Mythical Pokemon, roaming legendaries, you name it. The world of Pokemon is full of stories and wonder, and it's absolutely possible that I've missed a small detail here or there that might have changed the rankings. If you noticed anything, absolutely let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future.